Hi everyone, so I am here to read a, another short story and this one is named or called Lucinda the Little Donkey. We have a donkey at Pratt. Her name is Eleanor. I don't know if she'll get into as much mischief as Lucinda does though. Okay, so Mr. Pinckney was a farmer. He had cows and chickens and pigs and Lucinda. Lucinda was a shaggy little donkey. She had sleepy eyes and long ears like other donkeys. She had sharp little hooves like other donkeys, and she was stubborn just like other donkeys. But, said Mr. Pinckney, Lucinda is a very contrary little donkey too. When I want to go left, she goes right. And when I say stop, she just pretends she doesn't hear me. And when I put her in her bed in the barn at night, she gets right out again as soon as I am gone. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Lucinda is a very contrary, stubborn little donkey. Sure enough, that night, Lucinda waited quietly in her stall until Mr. Pinckney had closed up the barn and gone back to the house. Then she pushed the door open with her nose and trotted down the meadow where the cows were spending their night, and there Mr. Pinckney found her in the morning quietly eating clover and pretending that she was a cow. Mr. Pinckney scolded Lucinda all the way back to the barn, but Lucinda just twitched her left ear a little. She didn't care. When the day's work was over and night was coming, Mr. Pinckney very carefully put Lucinda in the barn again, and to make sure that she stayed there, he put a rope around her neck and tied it to the stall. Lucinda just waited, just opened her sleepy eyes a little wider and waited until Mr. Pinckney was gone. Then she braced her hooves and pulled and tugged and broke the rope. Out of the barn door, she trotted. Mr. Pinckney looked and looked next morning and finally found her in the pigsty where she was eating corn and rolling in the mud, pretending she was a pig. <coughs> Ooh, sorry guys. <laughs> um, so, poor Mr. Pinckney was so provoked He had to get the horse, the hose, and a big cake of soap and give Lucinda a bath. Now, that night, he was determined Lucinda should stay in her own bed. He put a new rope around her neck and tied it to her stall. Then, he closed the gate to the stall and tied it with a cord. And, last of all, he put a big shiny padlock on the barn door. Lucinda watched all, this, all the busy doings of Mr. Pinckney out of the corner of her eye. When she heard him go away, she braced her hooves and pulled and tugged until she broke the new rope that was around her neck. Then she undid the knot on the cord that fastened the stall gate. Lucinda was a very clever donkey, but there was the big shiny padlock on the do barn door. Lucinda twitched her ears. She blinked in her, her sleepy eyes. Then she turned. Then she turned her back to the door and kicked with both her sharp little hooves. Crash! Bang! And the padlock was broken and the, do the barn door stood open. Lucinda trotted out and this time she turned toward the road. Mr. Pinckney heard the crash when Lucinda broke the lock on the barn door. Oh my goodness, that contrary little donkey is at it again, sighed Mr. Pinckney. And grabbing his lantern, he started out to find her. He looked here and there and everywhere, but no Lucinda was to be found. Mr. Pinckney even looked in the duck pond and the dog's house, but Lucinda wasn't there either. It started to rain and then to pour, 
poor Mr. Pinkney didn't have his raincoat or his rubbers or his umbrella. He got wet and was very unhappy. Mr. Pinkney was plodding down the road to the town until still looking for Lucinda when he met his neighbors, Mr. Brown and Mr. Hutch, running as fast as they could. Run, 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 cried Mr. Hutch. The railroad bridge has washed away. And the express train number 49 is due any minute, cried Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mr. Pinkney started to run too, to warn number 49 that the bridge was down. All this time, Lucinda had been standing quietly under a tree by the railroad tracks. She was beginning to feel very wet and uncomfortable. Surely Mr. Pinkney will come fussing along soon and take me home to my nice warm stable, thought, Mr. thought Lucinda. Woo, 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 went the whistle off in the distance. Lucinda twitched her ears. Maybe that's Mr. Pinkney whistling for me, she thought. The whistle was big and loud, and Lucinda could see a bright light. It was train number 49, but Lucinda didn't know that. Well, Mr. Pinkney certainly has improved his whistling. How loud it is, and what a bright lantern he is carrying, said Lucinda to herself. I might as well take one step forward so he can be sure to see me, and she stepped right on the tracks. Whee! Went the brakes on number 49 what is a donkey doing on the railroad tracks cried the engineer and the fireman and the conductor and the porter just then mr pinkney mr brown and mr hutch came running up lucinda is the bravest smartest donkey there ever was she has saved number 49 from falling into the creek cried mr brown all the train people and Mr. Brown and Mr. Hutch brought, bought a beautiful silver medal for Lucinda to wear around her neck. And Mr. Pinckney said she could sleep anywhere she wanted. But do you know what? That contrary stubborn little donkey never went out the barn at night again. And the end. So... I hope you guys really enjoyed the story, um, and hopefully I will see you all soon. Bye, guys.